What's up, Metalheads? My name's Jamie. This is the Blades and EDC channel. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And today I got a good one for you guys. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Nazca. I think I'm saying that right. N A Z C A. Nazca or Nazca. Um, this is a premium knife, M390 blade steel, titanium, brass. Really cool knife. This is a great knife. A couple things that I definitely need to point out. There's one thing that's definitely needs to be uh, addressed if they do another run of these. I think most of these are sold out right now. I haven't watched anyone else's video on this, so I'm assuming other people have probably said the same thing. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute when I go over the cons. One con I will go ahead and point out to you, that beautiful satin finish is a fingerprint magnet. My God, is it gorgeous. Those grind lines are freaking beautiful. Just don't touch it with your fingers because it just fingerprints up instantly. All right, let's go over the specs real quick. Zoom you guys in, do a couple size comparisons. All right, overall length 7.48 inches, blade length 3.15 inches, blade thickness is 140 thousandths, M390 blade still, uh, clip point blade with a flat grind, um, the handle thickness is a half an inch and the weight is four and a half ounces. It is on ceramic ball bearings, and has a brass backspacer, has a wire pocket clip that is reversible, lefty righty tip up only, and uh, it is a crossbar lock with thumb stud action. And uh, let's do a couple size comparisons real quick. The obvious one, the Benchmade bug out, almost identical in length to a Benchmade bug out, almost identical. Here is the Ritter Hogue Mini RSK. A little bit bigger than the Mini RSK. By the way, this is going to be in the next knife sale. This may be, may or may not be. It's for sale. It's just a matter of whether or not I'm going to buy it. It's purple, you know, and I really like it a lot. I like that a lot too, but that's more expensive out of my price range. Here's the uh, Kershaw Heist going over some axis locks. It's just a hair shorter than the Heist. Uh, what other axis locks we got here? Here's the uh, Real Steel Huggin. Quite a bit shorter than Huggin. And uh, here's the real steel Sakura. And then we'll do a couple of the regulars. The Sakura is almost identical in length. Almost identical. You can also get this in Micarta, I should point out. Uh, the weight on the Micarta one, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. That is one of the downsides of this knife. For me personally, it's a personal thing. Yeah, I don't know. Three, just over a three inch blade and it's four and a half ounces. For me, that's more heavier than I like, but you know, it's a nitpick really because you know, a lot of people out there think that if a knife has a little more weight to it, it feels more premium to them. Um, so, a little bit longer than the Penguin, almost identical to the uh, Para 3. And here's the PM2 just for a comparison. So, quite a bit, much closer to, to the size of the PM3 than it is the, or the Para 3 than it is the PM2. Ergos are good on this knife. Uh, except for one, one's part, which is uh, the main con, other than the weight. And the weight, weight's not really a con. That's just a personal thing. But there is one thing in this thing that I do not like. Um, let's talk about the action first. Action's really good. It's, it's snappy as can be for a crossbar lock. It's also locked up, rock solid, no movement. They, with a lot of axis locks, man. You can get some play in there, especially side to side. This thing is rock solid, lock up. Um, Ergos, really good, fantastic. They even did, I think Voxnaz or Anzo. This is a, a, a collaboration between Voxnaz and Anzo. And one of them were the designer, I think it's Voxnaz was the designer of the F5.5. Puts the jimping out there right where it needs to be, right where the thumb's gonna hit. They did it on this knife too and it's perfect. And you got a little poon going on right there. Yeah, your thumb just feels great right there. You feel locked in in that grip right there. Feels really good in hand right there. Feels good in hand and everywhere, except when you go to close this axis lock, when you go to disengage. When you pull back on this, they left these corners right here, super sharp, right there, those two corners. Um, and when you pull it back into your hand, these corners up here are sharp also, but they don't make contact with you. Um, when you go to pull that lock back, those two little thing corners right there will poke you. Now, if you're using your knife like a normal person, you take it out, cut something, put it back up, and put it in your pocket, close it and put it in your pocket, probably not a big deal. But if you fidget, I've just fidgeted, fidgeted with this thing for a few minutes, and it's like, yeah, it's just 
digging into my palm. Those two little corners just keep digging in right there. Very uncomfortable. Um, the micarta version obviously would not have that problem. And honestly, it's an easy fix. Just take the knife apart and sand down the corners just a touch. Uh, lightly sand those little rounded. I don't know how well I can get that to focus in on that, but those little rounded corners right there are super sharp. Focus, camera focus. Yeah, right there. Super sharp. So it's uncomfortable, but only when you're closing the knife up. Otherwise, it feels fantastic in hand. That's something they really should, if they do another run of these, they really need to chamfer these four corners down for sure. I don't know why they didn't. Um, definitely needed it for sure. But yeah, it's a great knife. I really like this knife. I love the look of this knife. I love the ergonomics of this knife. I like the action of this knife a lot. It's a fantastic knife. These run 285 and the micarta version runs 225, I believe. Uh, I don't know if you're going to find the titanium version in stock anywhere. Uh, or I'll put this up in this box. Let's clean it off. Um, but you, the micarta is in stock in some places. So I'll link whatever I can in the description below. If you're really interested in getting this one, keep an eye out for the next knife sale. This one will be available at a uh, very good deal uh, compared to what you're going to buy it new. And this is new. Never cut anything. I haven't cut anything with it. The owner never even took it out of the box. So, well, they took it out of the box, put it back in the box, and it's just been sitting in the box. So, I think, man, those grind lines are gorgeous. God, they look so good. Once you get my fingerprints off of them, I'm going to show you those again before I end this video after I get it all cleaned up. Yeah. Get the light right where it doesn't blind you from the reflection. Look at those grind lines. I don't know. I couldn't figure out if it's... I think it's a hand satin. I really do. Yeah, it is a hand... It's got to be a hand satin. I could be wrong about that. That may be a belt satin, but it sure does look like a hand satin to me. It looks so good. All right, guys. I'm going to stop drooling over the satin finish. And... Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got any questions about this knife, comment below and let me know, especially if you're considering buying it, if you want to know anything about it before the sell video, which is going to be a couple weeks away. Feel free to contact me, and I'll answer whatever questions I can. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the next one.